Oh, good day, champions. I haven't uh, forgotten about yous. Here we go, continuing on with this garrison. If you watched the previous uh, video, you'll know what it's all about. I'll link that in the description below. In the meantime, um, I'll run you through what we're going to do in this episode. So we're going to mix up some putty, basically thin it down, use it as a grain filler. And we're going to <clears throat> fill the grain. And then we're going to sand that and put a sealer coat on and then put a top coat on it from there. So this is the putty that I use, or the, the water-based wood filler. So yeah, it's water-based, you just have to thin it with a little bit of water. Uh, so our next choice is what colour do we use? Now, when you've got a colour like mahogany, yeah, surely it says mahogany, um, it's going to highlight the grain a little bit. Whereas if we go a walnut, it'll actually look like the darker parts of the grain. So that'll make the grain more sort of subdued, that'll make it stand out a little bit in my opinion, if you have a lighter coloured uh, grain filler, it looks a little bit like, it starts looking a bit like a false laminate. It doesn't look natural. If you go a slightly darker colour, uh, I think it looks most natural. Uh, and we've also got to bear in mind that we're dealing with the raw timber colour at the moment. We want to know what it's going to look like when the timber's wet. So I'll just use a little bit of methylated spirits to show roughly what the finished colour of the timber will be and we'll, we'll compare them side by side with each. So you can see here about what the colour of the timber will be once it is sprayed. Um, so I think going with the walnut as a grain filler will be a better choice than the mahogany. So we'll get a bit of this walnut, don't need much. So just a dollop of uh, that suspicious looking substance. Bit of water, bit at a time. And just work it in. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Smells like a hospital, this stuff. It must have some disinfectant in it. It stops it from um, going mouldy. So we'll just brush it on sparingly. And the end grain on this is still blocked from uh, the original sealer coat, but we'll, we'll apply it there as well, just in case there's any grains that are still open. And just work it in by hand. Feel a little bit like a... Uh, What's his name? Bob Ross at the moment. That's some happy little grain filler. Alright, so we'll let that dry. And then we'll give it another fine sand to like 320 in preparation for the sealer coat. Alright, so the grain filler's dried. Just giving it a quick hand sand with 320. We wiped off uh, most of the excess while it was still wet. But this is just to, because uh, it's lifted the grain a little bit thanks to the moisture in it. And also just take off any bits that we missed. Alright champions, we've got it all masked up. We've filled the grain, we've uh, sanded it to 320. So it's time to mix up some sealer. And uh, get a coat on. So with spray painting, um, cleanliness is essential. So I got a reputation in my early cabinet making days. I started uh, in the industry mainly spray painting and finishing. And uh, work my way up to the design from there but I got a reputation for spray gun maintenance I was the only one who would fully disassemble the gun after every different color was used um, with polyurethane it's a catalyzed finish so you're actually mixing two parts together and uh, that hardens no matter what once you've mixed them together with single pack lacquers like uh, nitrocellulose they rely on the evaporation of the solvent in order to dry to cure so that process takes a much longer time, but it also means that it doesn't cure without the ability for the solvent to evaporate. So in the tins, obviously it doesn't harden in there. You can also leave it in your spray gun uh, for longer periods if you're doing touch-up work. So for example, Gibson headstocks, we all know they love to snap and uh, there's always one or two a month to, to repair and touch up. So I might leave my small touch-up gun there with just some gloss nitrocellulose um, ready to rock for the next repair. Now nitro finishes that include a matting agent, so be it satin or matte finish, uh, that matting agent will settle into the bottom of the can or the bottom of the spray gun, so it's not a good idea to leave them in the gun, they can clog it up and you need to uh, stir it each time you're gonna use it, like literally a, a few hours and it settles, so you wanna stir it immediately before use. So clear lacquer is the only one that you can safely leave in the gun and it's ready to use next time you uh, you pick it up. 
this particular brand's Durabond. Uh, there's many manufacturers worldwide. I think these guys actually source large quantities from some other manufacturer and they just mix up the colors and sell it in smaller quantities, which suits me well because a one liter clear, usually touch up work. It's pretty rare that I do a full respray. It does happen from time to time if I'm feeling crazy enough, but usually it's just touch up stuff and a, a, one liter of clear um, lasts me a, probably a year or more. But the way that nitro settles, if you are doing a full respray of, say, an acoustic or something, it does take probably like half a can because most of the solvent that makes up the volume of that evaporates, whereas polyurethane, it's a catalytic process and it actually sets like a plastic. So uh, a smaller amount of polyurethane goes a lot further than nitrocellulose. So anyway, let's get this gun back together. We'll mix up some clear sealer and get a coat on this neck. Alright, so here's the stuff we're using. I've used this stuff for years, decades even. Jesus, I'm getting old. Uh, BC coatings, it's a polyurethane. Uh, it's a high build sealer, so um, it fills the grain pretty effectively by itself and uh, it dries very quickly. So this is mixed in a 2 to 1 ratio. You can see there, mixed two parts by volume of base A to one part B hardener. And we don't need a lot, probably like 200 mil in fact. So I've got my mixing cup here that shows the ratios on the side. I don't like pouring it because it goes everywhere. You want to mix enough that you can actually get an accurate ratio. If you're mixing a tiny tiny amount, it's hard to get, get your ratios correct. Oh, we'll go up to the two mark. And we'll get our hardener. a touch more sometimes I uh, use a pipette or a dropper when the tin is fuller than it currently is otherwise it goes everywhere all right now that we've got our correct ratio we filled our paint up to here and our hardener up to here we can go ahead and add some thinners you can see this third little box over here shows 10 20 30 that's the percentage uh, you want to start you can't take thinners out once you've added it and then it's hard to get the right ratio again by adding other parts so you want to take it slowly i usually start at around 20 percent depending on what the weather's like and if i'm laying on a lighter coat several lighter coats uh, i might make it a little bit thinner now if the weather's extremely hot uh well ideally you just go to the pub and you don't spray paint <laughs> but you can add retarder which is uh it's like a slow evaporating thinner so when you use the fast or the standard thinners um it in very high temperatures it almost evaporates as soon as it hits the work surface particularly if it's warm as well so you end up with a dusty sort of orange peely coat you don't have the ability to form a continuous film adding the retarder slows down the rate of evaporation uh, at least of the thinner um, the catalytic process is still occurring in the paint itself the thinner helps it flow so that enables you to actually form a film and get it to flatten out over the surface before it dries off today we're at 22 degrees celsius about 70 percent relative humidity we'll use the standard thinners but we'll lay as thin a coat on as we can because uh, with that humidity i don't want it sitting there absorbing moisture for too long because that can result in all sorts of other issues like uh pinholing that kind of stuff poly is pretty unforgiving for high levels of humidity to spray it effectively you you need some degree of air drying uh capability in your in your compressed air setup i've just got a filter and it and a desiccant filter uh if you doing this for production you'd have like a refrigerant air filter which actually actively cools the air uh and condenses the water flushes that water out and then goes through extra filtering after that but you're talking like a two three thousand dollar barrier of entry there and then a lot more power and you've got to store the thing somewhere for the occasional touch-up work i just get away with with my uh particulate and oil filter and a desiccant filter after that now here's my poor little compressor covered in polished compound and <laughs> dust. This is the most powerful single phase one I could get. And um, it's slow running, so it's a twin cylinder. It's like a V-twin. Plus, just V-twins are cool, eh? <laughs> I've always liked them in motorcycles, so why not from a compressor? 
it runs at a lower RPM, so it doesn't heat the air up as much, which is what you want. Those little direct drive things you get from Home Depot or whatever, um, they run at much higher revs and they heat the air up a lot. And what that does is puts the water out of the atmosphere and the oil from the pistons into a vapor, and that can um, find its way into your air. It's very hard to filter out in vapor form, whereas these run cooler, so the, the water tends to stay in its liquid form and not not try to find its way through to your spray gun in uh, in a vapor. So we'll add about 20% thinners. You want to add the thinners after you've got your ratio right between your paint and your hardener. Then we'll give that a stir. Now we want to stir this to get the catalyst working and then let it sit for about five minutes and come back, give it a stir again before we put it in the gun just to make sure it's, uh, it's doing its thing. You sort of get a feel for the viscosity. Um, you can use a viscosity cup or whatever. Um, I tend to just lift up the ruler and just see how quickly it starts forming individual droplets. If it starts forming them after about a second, that's about the viscosity I like. If it's a, a long sort of stream for multiple seconds, it means it's probably too thick and you've got to add a bit of thinners. And if it's like water and it starts dripping straight away, You've probably gone too far with the thinners. And like I say, it's easy to add more thinners. It's hard to uh, take it out. You've pretty much got to make another batch. Or you can let it sit for a while until the catalyst starts to thicken it up a little bit. But uh, then it's a knife edge race against time before it uh, goes too thick. Because once it started getting to that point, things happen pretty quickly after there. You want the paint to be on the, on the work surface by the time that that starts occurring. Now, I'm not a professional spray painter by any means. There's going to be guys in the comments that do it for a living and telling me that I'm getting stuff wrong. This is just what works for me. Uh, I've never had any issues with it. I have come from the furniture background, uh, like doing polyurethane on kitchen doors and whatever, as well as high-end furniture, like um, custom-made tables, chairs, that kind of thing. And, you know, it's all worked fine. You have the occasional screw-up that you learn from it, and that's pretty much how I learn everything in life anyway. Eventually, you have more success than screw-ups, and uh, that's how you become a jack-of-all-trades. All right, so we'll let that cure. And uh, later tonight, I'll come back, give it a sand, and we'll uh, apply the satin top coat. So I sprayed this one around eight, nine o'clock this morning. Now it's, what, 6.30 p.m. It's cured. So we're gonna give it a sand and uh, hit it with a top coat. Now you can see the grain is still visible in the top skin of the paint there. It always sinks in to some degree. There's variance in the uh, absorption of the, the putty versus the, the timber itself. But 
it's shallow enough that we'll probably n get rid of most of that in this uh, sanding before applying the top coat and then it, it shouldn't be visible or maybe in one or two spots uh, but if you want it completely flat you can sand it apply another coat of sealer and then sand it again and apply the top coat over that however many times it requires to be perfectly flat sands pretty easily this stuff it is formulated to be uh, not soft but not gummy it's a lot softer than the top coat the sandpaper sort of just bounces off the top coat but um it doesn't gum up the paper uh, that's a, my biggest problem with nitrocellulose lacquers they they gum up the paper and you get these little dots on there and if you keep sanding without getting rid of them or getting a new piece you end up scoring the finish and uh they they will occur in literally that many strokes They're like you get a new piece of sandpaper bang 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 you already have new little little uh little bits on there that are causing scoring in the finish and it it means you really have to let nitrocellulose cure for a very long time between coats if you're going to actually sand it proper so what most people do is they just build up the coats um, polyurethane doesn't dissolve the coat below it when you spray it on top so you need to sand everything for what what we say keying in so that's where literally the microscopic scratches you're making with the sandpaper provide like a, a surface for the next coat to stick to now if you don't do that you get what we had initially with this guitar and the the next coat just peels straight back off again because it can't stick to that shiny surface so essentially you've got to sand it until all the shiny bits are gone and they all look that that sort of white color that means you've actually scored the surface enough for the next coat to adequately key into but you only want to sand it just enough that you don't go through the finish or you'll have to either reapply sealer in that area or you're going to go through the stain coat now this timber doesn't have any stain on it so if you go through it's not the end of the world you can spray it again but if you're doing like a headstock repair and there's a stain in the timber or on a coat of lacquer that's first applied to the timber if you go through that film you're going to end up with a white patch a very lighter patch where you've sanded through the stain uh, and it's very hard to touch that up and make it look continuous you almost to make it disappear you almost need to strip the whole thing back to timber again and go again there's always going to be some discoloration in that area you can never match it perfectly so you really don't want to do that all right champion so that's the sealer coat sanded ready for the top coat so we will mix the top coat pretty much the exact same way as the sealer same ratio maybe a touch less thinners but essentially the same and this time we've got uh, UT900, uh, clear satin on the left and the hardener on the right. Just stir up the matting agent. You can see that is the jelly-like substance there. Want to make that all uh, continuous consistency. Consistent consistency? I don't know. See, we're starting to get there. It's breaking it up a little bit. If you're going to leave paints uh, like matte or satin or just pigmented paints for a while, it's good to take them out every six months or something and just give them a good old stir so it doesn't turn into a super harder than a coffin nail biscuit down at the bottom of the tin. Now you can see on the reflection there, it's pretty smooth. So we've uh, stirred in all the matting agent. Time to uh, add some hardener and mix her up. Now, although it's uh, unseasonably warm for this time of year, I still want to try and get this coated as soon as possible because the, the light's dying and my workshop lights are only so good. It's uh, it's tough trying to do this stuff after hours when you've got a full-time store. I'll tell you what. Just giving the gun a bit of a tweak. Normally do that on a sample piece, but yeah, I'm a cowboy. Get 
down in the light there and have a close look. Now it's a bit like the thinners. You can always put more on and it can't take it back off. Yeah, humidity is working in our favor at the moment. It's dropped down to 56%. So that's fantastic. That gives us a fighting chance of not having any defects. I'll let that tack off. We've got good cover. We'll come back and maybe give it another pass once it's uh, gelled up a bit. All right, after the second pass, it's looking nice and silky. So we'll leave that to cure overnight. And we'll take off all the masking and then start working on the soundboard. And with every new coat of polyurethane, you've got to tear the gun down completely and uh, clean all the, the mixing gear and everything. So fun, fun.